Okay, today we're going to talk about how to solder. Not the complicated NASA type of soldering, but just really the basics of soldering. Now, the first thing you're going to need is obviously a soldering iron. And they come in all different shapes and sizes. Um, just really any soldering iron is better than no soldering iron. So, you know, I'm going to be using this really cool butane iron for this uh, video, but just know that everything I'm going to be going over will work with any soldering iron for the most part. Now, in this video, I'll be using this Irota Solder Pro 110. It's pretty unusual in the fact that it uses butane to heat the solder tip. Now, it actually still works exactly like any other soldering iron would. It just happens to use butane as the heat source. Uh, the one caveat to that is that there will be an exhaust port someplace on a butane uh, soldering iron, and you need to be aware that it is actually pumping out a little bit of heat from that. Um, the issue is if you're kind of like in an enclosed space, uh, you just have to be conscious of which direction the, the exhaust port is facing. So most soldering irons will have the ability to change the tips on them, and I just want to go over really quickly just some really common ones. Uh, the first one is a conical tip, and you would typically be using this for soldering components on a circuit board. And the other two most common are going to be chiseled tips, and you're going to use those for wiring. Um, they're, they're nice because they actually typically are a little bit bigger, and um, they hold like a solder a little bit better. Um, you might want to use the larger tips um, if you actually are soldering like really thick wire. Uh, just the extra mass of that tip helps um, get the heat into that thicker wire. Um, get the heat. Now let's talk about wiring and um, some of the tools that you're going to need to do that. Um, so one of my favorite tools for stripping wires are uh, the stripping guns. Um, they're pretty inexpensive and they just really make quick work of stripping. So over here I am actually stripping two wires at the same time with this guy, which is nice. And uh, I'm going to try to make it as even as possible and just grip it in and there you go. Uh, I like to leave the insulation at the end of it, that way I have something to twist on. So when I twist the wires this is a little bit easier. So when I cause some issues, so now that they're nice and twisted, I'm going to make an X and uh, try to make it as even as possible. And you just kind of twist the two wires around each other and kind of get this nice braid that forms up just like that. Now this particular type of uh, splice um, is really good for kind of like lower gauge wires, maybe some, maybe something a little bit like a medium gauge wire. Uh, the one thing you always have to watch out for are these like stray strands and you, you just really want to fold them over because once we solder it, they'll actually be pretty stiff and um, there's a real danger that it will poke out of uh, the heat shrink that you'll use later and uh, cause a short. So it's something that you, you just definitely want to make sure that all the strands are just kind of like fold it over. Okay, so I just want to show kind of the most common soldering mistake here. And that is where you just put a bunch of solder on the tip of the soldering iron and just kind of hope that it will solder and it won't because the, the strands are not hot. Um, the surface that you're trying to solder needs to actually be hot enough to uh, facilitate solder flow. So without that, all the solder just kind of balls off and you'll end up with a, what we would call a dry joint or it would fail pretty quickly. Okay, so, uh, you know, I just realized I didn't show sliding the heat shrink down one end of the, the wire. Um, always remember to do that because I, I don't know how many times I've actually soldered a, um, a wire and I forgot to put the heat shrink on and I had to start all over. Okay, so this is the proper way to do a connection. And if you notice, I, I, I did put a little bit of solder on the tip and that's actually just so it can conduct its heat to the strands of the wire better. And you see, I'm just kind of like poking around the, the strands, seeing if it's getting hot enough to let that solder just like flow inside. And that's, what, that's really what you're looking for. You're looking for the solder 
to, to just go into each individual strand. Now, once you're done, you just want to just let it sit for a second or two just to let that solder uh, set up. There's like these fine crystalline structures and you don't really want to mess that up and any vibrations could um, compromise that solder joint. And just the last step here is to get that uh, heat shrink tube and uh, you want to get make sure that you're it slides over the insulation of the wire. You don't want to just heat shrink it right at the strands because, uh, you know, it shrinks and, you know, you'll have some exposed wire there. So right now I am using a little hot gun attachment on my Iroda uh, Pro 110. That's great, actually. It's way better than using lighter. And I just realized that the way I have this wire set up, uh, I can't get to the underside, so let me detach it here and, you know, let's see. And uh, magic, it's done. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, pretty cool, right? So, uh, let's go ahead and try something thicker. So, this method of splicing wires is really the, the go-to method for, like, kind of... Uh, thick wires and what we're doing is we're, I'm going to kind of splay out all the individual strands and the idea here is um, I'm going to have them kind of like kiss together and just kind of like move them so they just kind of like interconnect this way and um, just move it in and once it's kind of all the strands are kind of like interconnected that way and we twist really hard to kind of braid them slightly together um, and let's go get this guy clean and tight you want this really tight yeah so you want something that looks like that so let's get in here oh and um, you're gonna want to use uh, a flux actually some type of flux to get it going on uh, for the smaller gauged wires um, you know kind of just relying on the flux that is embedded within your solder is fine but um, for thicker gauged wire you're probably gonna want to use well you're absolutely gonna want to use some type of flux so you don't need too much flux um, and it doesn't have to be that pretty because as soon as we start adding the heat it'll start to melt and get into all of those strands and you see that like you know again I, I put just a little bit of solder on my tip to facilitate that heat transfer and it's really just uh, you just have to be patient and just wait for the wire to heat up enough to where it will let that solder flow into those strands and it can take a while and you just need to be patient and just wait for it to happen. This isn't something that you really can rush. And um, so you just wait and it starts to happen. And, and that's what you want to see. You want to start seeing like the, the solder getting sucked into each of these individual strands. And it's just like, it just sucks it in. So it doesn't really require too much work on your part. Just some patience, steady hand. And you can kind of get in there and get all that solder in between those strands to make a really great connection. And then, um, you know, when you're using a wider or a heavier gauge uh, connection like this, you're gonna wanna leave it alone for a while. It'll take a few seconds for this to actually properly set up. Um, because that wire is actually pretty hot right now and it's thick so it's just gonna hold on to that heat so sometimes you're gonna want to solder components um, with wire and uh, it's a, very similar to doing wiring but there's a few things that make it a lot easier so let's strip this guy here and again I always like to leave a little bit of insulation there a quick little twist that off. So what I like to do is tin my wires before I actually go into a component and um, it just makes it quicker to solder because uh, once you have, you've tinned the wire uh, when you later go in and solder it and it just it just happens a lot faster. It's also nice that um, you don't end up with any like stray strands so like um, you know if, if you're doing components in like a uh, cramped area 
is less less of a chance of your of the strands coming undone. So it's pretty easy. As soon as you have your tin wired, I like to to pre-trim it as well, so it's just ready to go. And because it's been uh, pre-tinned, you know, just put a little bit on my tip here, and it'll happen quickly. Is it just goes straight to the wire? And just like before, you just want to let it sit for a second. Well, that was my first YouTube video. Yay! Make sure you like and subscribe if you want to see some more. And uh, with that, I'll see you guys next time.